NASA punted on a decision today about what to do about getting samples back from the surface of Mars back to Earth. And I really can't blame them, but today's announcement really did not spur any kind of decision, and I think that was on purpose. So going backwards, we are talking about Mars sample return. Perseverance has been roving around the surface of Mars, collecting interesting bits of regolith, the dirt, dust, little box that are on the surface of Mars, picking it up into tubes and leaving those tubes on the surface of Mars, 30 in total. And the idea with Mars sample return is to send a vehicle that can then go and collect these samples that have been left behind and return them back to Earth. And when I first heard about this, I'm wondering, why don't we put our resources, our energy, our time into sending humans to Mars to do this for us? But the key here is that Mars is an area that we are very interested in whether or not there was ever life or currently have life. So we're talking about planetary protection. It is a Mars sample return specifically is a category five mission. That's the highest level. Mars shares this with um, Enceladus and Europa. Those are also very high areas of interest within our solar system where we are wondering, is there life? Has there ever been life? Because one of the key questions that we as scientists want to answer is, are we alone? Is there any life out there aside from what is on Earth? And we humans are very dirty in terms of the life that we have. Life proliferates. We are full of bacteria. We've got mites on us. Like we are a whole ecosystem of ourselves. So wherever we go, we bring life with us. We will contaminate the environment of wherever we go. And if there ever was or currently is life on Mars and we contaminate that evidence, then it's inconclusive. And that's the last thing we want. We don't want anything that is inconclusive to say that we have this evidence that there was or is life on Mars and we cannot say for certain whether that life came from Earth with us, with either our bodies or the hardware that we bring. So we sterilize the hardware and we are staying as humans away from these samples so that they can be pristine as much as we can. It's never gonna be 100%. We need to robotically send a system to go pick up these tubes to bring them back to Earth to study them. Now, why not study them on the surface of the Mars? Um, there are plenty of instruments on Mars throughout the decades. We have flown things to Mars to study the Martian surface and other things, the Martian atmosphere, for example. But it's not the same as the laboratory equipment that we have here on Earth. Plus, there are teams here on Earth, multiple teams. We can distribute the samples to multiple teams, multiple laboratories, even multiple countries if we bring it back here to Earth. Well, we brought back Apollo samples and humans dug those, right? But the moon is a sterile environment. Nobody, as far as I know, thinks that there ever was or currently is life on the surface of a moon or subsurface. And therefore, it doesn't matter if we contaminate it. We're not looking for life. But Mars, we're definitely looking for life. So the idea is that we're sending these systems out there robotically. And NASA decided about a year ago that this was just too expensive. The whole thing that they put together for Mars sample return, way over budget, way delayed, you know, 2040s we're talking about. And NASA Administrator Bill Nelson decided, that's it, we need to reevaluate this. And probably with some pressure from Congress as well. So they put out, NASA put out a call to industry saying, send us your proposals, send us your ideas. Full disclosure, I was on two proposals that did not get selected. NASA did down select to 11 proposals in September, and then today announced two different paths that they are going to work on simultaneously. Option number one, is to use what has already been previously tested and successfully used on the entry, descent, and landing capabilities, and that's the Sky Crane. And it's been used twice successfully on Curiosity and Perseverance. The second architecture, or option two, is looking at the possibility of going into commercial capabilities of a heavy lander with existing commercial partners. The first path is very traditional. It is JPL. JPL, when they do things, they are innovative and creative and you know, it'll get the job done. It, it is um, you know, absolutely certain that they're going to succeed for the most part. They have a fantastic recent track record, but it's going to be expensive no matter what they say. The other path is commercial capabilities, and they left that vague, but they really mean SpaceX Starship. I don't think there's any other vehicle that can do this mission, that would want to do this mission, um, that has been talking about doing this mission since SpaceX was formed, uh, or, or a similar mission, than SpaceX. And so even though they didn't say Starship, I think that's what they mean. They're gonna work on these two paths simultaneously, and then they're talking about down-selecting to one path to actually do the Mars sample return. And the reason why they punted is because today is January 7th. 
and January 20th, a new administration starts. A new president, a new Congress, different priorities, different budgets. They can do whatever they want after January 20th. Um, so this is more like the current administration, the current NASA leadership giving advice to future leaders to say, this is what we think the best options are. And it's up to you to decide what you want to do about this. Do you want to infuse more money? Because we can do more things or you can, you know, in, within the proposal that was uh, announced today with JPL, they say it's a smaller Mars Ascent vehicle. It's a larger sky crane. They, they've simplified some things that supposedly make it cheaper, although I don't believe that. And so the idea here is that NASA has been squeezed budgetarily for a few years now. Congress is not in the mood to it, it give NASA more money. It has been a cutting science in particular. Um, it, it might have the appetite to give NASA more budget for human exploration, but not for Mars science, I don't believe. And I don't think that's going to change anytime soon with the incoming Congress and the incoming presidential administration. So here is NASA leadership saying, we don't know what's going to happen in the future any more than you do. So here are these possibilities that we are moving forward with without making a decision. One of the questions on the call today with the press uh, was asking about, well, how does punting on this decision, my words, how does delaying this decision um, save time? And it doesn't necessarily save time, but I think it saves face a little bit. I think that if NASA were to choose a direction today and then in two weeks or two months or whenever um, that direction is totally changed, well then um, it wouldn't be so embarrassing, now would it? Now there are similarities with these two paths, whether or not it's JPL or commercial capability, they're both going to use the Mars Ascent vehicle, MAF, yeah, Mars Ascent vehicle. They are both gonna use the European Space Agency's Earth Return Orbit, there it is. Um, so they've got those things in common. There's a lot of things that could differ. One thing that's changed, instead of using solar panels, they're gonna use a radioisotope thermal generator. Um, um, you know, it's it's simpler and also they don't have to worry about the dust devils that are on the surface of Mars uh, so some changes there that were announced that we didn't previously know but otherwise this is really um, underwhelming information something to put out there for future administrations to decide and we do have this interesting future possibility where the incoming president, we know that he is interested in Mars. He talked about Mars as far back as 2017 when he was first president. And now he has a friend that is Elon Musk who founded a company about sending humans to Mars. So what direction are they going to take with Mars sample return? I could actually see a future where they decide to use JPL for Mars sample return, the official mission, but also use Starship in another capacity because Starship is going to Mars anyway, and it's gonna do an uncrewed demo before it does humans on board. So I can see a future where NASA is partnering with SpaceX to do Mars science on an uncrewed Mars mission outside of Mars sample return. But who knows, right? It could just be that you know, Mars uh, commercial capabilities are chosen for Mars sample return over the JPL Skycreen method. I will put NASA's announcement down in the description below. You can take a look at it. You can also listen to the press briefing that happened today. If you are interested in learning what the next administration might do with Mars and is the moon a distraction, go ahead and check out this video next.